I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. It is story time. Okay, let me look cute first before I sit here and talk forever. Do I look cute? Do I look like a Barbie? What's up, Team Team Vivi? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? I'm doing better, but how y'all doing? Okay, also, yeah, scope the fit. It's pretty cute little um barbie girl anyways so the question the story that you guys have all been asking me for on instagram and on youtube i'm finally making the video because it just takes a lot of energy for this video and i've talked about it a million times to my family members and to my friends my close friends but you guys are like family to me which is why i am making this video so i was gone for two weeks yeah about two weeks um i don't know who remembers or who knows that i was in maui um i think it was like the sixth or the seventh and um going about my day went on a little fun maui trip for my friend's birthday and little do you know you go from maui to the hospital within 24 hours so um to make this really long story that could be very long a little bit shorter i'm gonna kind of sum it up um some of you may remember i was in the hospital here in hawaii a few months ago for some of the similar problems i'll tell you the story that they finally found um so basically to start just so you can get the idea of what happened um, when I was 16 years old, I was in the hospital for the first time. I don't remember too much of it because I was so young, but basically I am anemic and I was in the hospital for, um, some kind of bleeding and I ended up being on iron pills and basically they did a colonoscopy and then they did the one where it goes down your throat to try and scope and see like where it's coming from. Anyways, it stopped and that was it. Okay. Bypass years later, 16 to... I was 24, well, I'm 24 now. Um, I was in the hospital a few months ago and the same thing happened um, to where I started to see, and yes, this story might get a little TMI. So if you wanna listen to the whole thing, you're gonna have to deal with listening to stool and blood and etc. You asked and I'm giving you the answer. So um, I had blood in my stool, which is not a good thing, which was a sign. Anyways, I was in Maui. Um, no, 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 sorry. I went too forward. The last time I was in the hospital, I had um, almost passed out on the treadmill. I can't remember if I told you guys this story already, probably, but I almost passed out on the treadmill. And anyways, my blood count was way out of whack and it ended up being that my anemic, I was really anemic and I was leaking blood somewhere internally. So anyways, from that day when I went into the hospital, I was there for almost a week and they did um, the camera going up, going down twice. They did a balloon thing to pull my small intestine to try and see where the bleeding is coming from. They did so many different things. They did a camera pill where you swallow a camera pill and anyways, the whole process of being in the hospital is just hell because you have to, you don't get to eat you have to detox your body so they can see inside of you with the camera, etc. Anyway, so that was a few months ago and they didn't find anything. My, they gave me like four bags of blood transfusion, which is also hard because I have one bad kidney, um, chronic kidney disease, which is getting better, but that you have to be careful when we, you only have one really good kidney um, with all these like tests and scans and everything. So anyways, that hospital trip was about a week and I thought, cool, I guess they figured it out. I was anemic and then they gave me blood and I'm good. Okay, so I thought that was okay. And then come months later, now we're in July. And it was like July 6th or 7th, I was in Maui. And the week prior to that, I was kind of feeling like a little bit low on energy. I was kind of feeling like tired, but I just thought I was working a lot. I was doing two days in the gym. I thought just a bunch of different things that like giving myself excuses why I was more tired than usual. 4th of July, I wasn't even feeling it like to go out, but then I ended up going out. Um, 
and then the day I went to Maui I wasn't really like I mean I was excited to go but I was like in the back of my head I was feeling like some kind of way and it was all because now I know why so anyways we're in Maui literally the next day I started to feel um, very weak even more so and like like I said this can be so random um, very tired very just like I don't want to do anything um, and then the signs started to come back from last time so I started to try to not like worry but I ate breakfast and I had coffee and then my acai bowl I had for breakfast also had espresso beans so I was giving myself the excuse I think I'm just shaky and like jittery and my heart's racing because I had too much caffeine and it's hot it was really hot and so I started to give myself these excuses I called my mom and I started to tell her I was like I can't even walk up the stairs without feeling like I'm a hundred years old because my heart's racing at like a hundred and fifty and I start to like go in the gym where the AC is in Maui at the resort and sit on the bike or the treadmill and thank God I didn't start working out again like last time. Um, and so I was talking to my mom on the phone. She's like, get off the treadmill right now. Like, that's not a good idea if your heart's racing. I go relax by the pool, do something else besides, you know, get off the treadmill. So I ended up getting off the treadmill because every time I got up, I was lightheaded. My heart was racing anyway so i was having these signs then i'm sitting down by the pool which now i found out in the long run that this was even worse to be soaking up this hot sun with what was going on inside of me so all these things that i'm doing outside in maui were not helping what was going on internally with me so anyways i just wasn't feeling it so i went to go get a pedicure instead with my friend and sit inside the ac and i was like falling asleep there like something was just not wrong like or right i just wasn't feeling good at all so then I was like, maybe I need to eat more. So we go back up to the resort anyways, long story shorter. Um, I couldn't explain this feeling that I was feeling. So I told my friend like, I need food like right now, like this is urgent. So he ran downstairs to go grab me a banana from the cafe before we were about to head out and, and go um, leave. Cause I, I booked a flight back to go to, um, uh, where I live here on Oahu because I wasn't feeling it. I was like, I can't stay another day. We were supposed to stay another day until Monday. I was like, I can't. I need to go like right now. Like I'm feeling like really, really bad and something is not right. So we we're about to leave to go to the airport and um, I'm laying on the bed. He runs up, grabs me a banana. That doesn't do much. So I'm like, I really don't feel good. Like I, it's almost like the pass out feeling that I almost had. But then we decided to go downstairs. As soon as we got downstairs into the resort to check out, I passed out in the middle of the freaking resort in front of everybody. The ambulance came, they all came. They tried to feed me some, which is even harder when you're vegan, some salad to get my levels. And then they gave me like dried apricots because it's good for iron and anemic. Anyways, it was crazy. My friend was running out all over the place. The ambulance came. Once they cleared me, which I'm surprised they cleared me, but I'm thankful they cleared me because I wanted to be at this hospital in Oahu at Kaiser that I was at last time. And another good thing, because the doctor literally saved my life. Um, anyway, so they let me go. They rushed me from a wheelchair to the car, and then we got to the car. We barely made it to the flight, and we had to tr he had to go return the rent a car then come back and I was sitting in the wheelchair and they wheelchaired me up to the flight and they almost didn't let me go on because they needed a note from the um what's it called the ambulance saying that I'm okay to fly from Maui back to Oahu um anyways ended up calling and clearing me thankfully then they rushed me to the hospital then it all started two weeks in the hospital so the first night I had another like a mini attack in the hospital where I was about to pass out on the bed again. Um, I had like two bags of blood that night. I had, it was crazy. So starting from there, I couldn't even tell you everything, all the things that I had in the hospital, except for the fact that I was living in hell. Like literally felt like I was living in hell, but I'm thankful I'm alive because to sum it all up, um, I had about 19 bags of blood. I was leaking blood internally. Um, I had like six different CAT scans. I had ones where I had to sit on a, like a bed 
for two hours straight while they scanned my body. I had scans where, um, and this is all the, this is all what they were trying to find out where the internal bleeding was coming from. It was getting so bad to the point where, you know, they couldn't find it. And giving somebody so much blood, you can only give so much blood to somebody at a time. And every bag of blood I was getting, I was just losing. So I was getting and losing, getting and losing. And it wasn't doing anything. My hemoglobin levels were like at six and dropping. And then I would get blood and go right back down. So every time I heard that, it would scare me. So my mom flew out. My dad flew out the next day. They couldn't come together because of his work. So anyway, she flew out first, which made me feel a lot better. Obviously, my mom's there with me. And, um, and thank you again to everyone, my friends, and everybody who was there supporting and just checking in and sending gifts and stuff. I appreciate you guys and I appreciate everyone that was there by my side and praying. And I had so many people by my side, which got me through it. But so my mom was there and she saw me go through literally hell, which was even harder for her, which was even harder for me. And um, Anyway, so every bag of blood I was losing and so I had a doctor come in and tell me that I looked like I was deteriorating because I was just so... They need to figure out where this blood was coming from. So finally the third time me being in the hospital, they finally figured out the case of what it was. Through so many tests, through 19 bags of blood, through scans, through so many different things I can even really remember everything I was out of it most of the days I was on medicine I was not eating I didn't eat so I, yes as you guys can tell I lost a lot of weight and um, basically what happened was one of the scans they did they were scanning for a well the surgeon saved my life literally like the reason why I'm alive I believe is because of him he said this is possibly Meckel's diverticulosum let me look it up and tell you because you guys this is still new to me and I still don't even really know how to explain like what what this is and I didn't even know that this could something that is um, possible or you just never know. So um, Meckel's di diverticulum, it's an outpatching or a bulge in the lower part of the small intestines. The bulge is present at birth so you're born with it and it can randomly come up into your life at any time. So after the third trip of me going to the hospital, they finally found out where I was bleeding. So it's the most common defect of the gastrointestinal tract and occurs about two to three percent of the general population. So basically, it's this like tip of the umbilical cord after the, uh, let me try and find a picture. Um, it's by the small intestine, which makes sense why all these tests that they were doing, like the colonoscopy and the one down my throat, trying to find that that was the area where the source of bleeding was. So finally the surgeon said, um, after we did this CAT scan where you take some of my blood and then they mix it with like white cells and other stuff and then they put the blood back in my IV, my own blood, and then it trickles down, like you're in this CAT scan for like two hours and they saw that it was in that area. So he said it has to be... Meckles and it was kind of a guess too and he's like we don't have a choice we need to go in and do surgery now like this girl is like falling apart like we need to go in and save her life like now basically so Meckles it's um if you look it up it's by the small intestine and it's I don't know if you can see that right now um but it's an abnormal pouch of tissue by the small intestine so basically mine was the size of my finger so thankfully you know he went in there they had to make three small incisions which i could show you guys i still have the little tape on it and it's the tape that just like falls off naturally um you're not supposed to peel it off so i had three small incisions i had surgery and they removed it and it was like the size of my finger they said thankfully i had an amazing surgeon and the the areas where he did it are very small and the scars are going to go away and one of them you could hardly even see and it's like almost um the tape's almost off so at that point i didn't care i mean scar is a scar whatever i'm still living i didn't care about the scar um but basically that's what it was and so i would have probably been out shortly after that but then we're trying to see if i can eat again so then they start adding in liquid and after you have surgery it's very sensitive down there like very sensitive in your stomach so we start with liquids and then they go to like or click clear liquids and then liquids 
and then they go to food and we tried the food too soon for the surgery so basically what happened from there was it irritated my stomach and I had something spicy which was also our bad that we had something spicy um, so I was eating and eating um, small meals and the last meal I had that night I had the worst pain in my entire life like this made me not ever want to have a baby it was so bad um, this really bad cramp in the top of my stomach and it was for two days straight I kid you guys not it kept me up all night the whole next day all night the whole next day finally like throwing up I threw up probably like six to eight times which made my stomach feel better um, throwing up throwing up throwing up literally saw all the food that was too much for my stomach and that kept me in a whole another week in the hospital because um, my blood started to drop again and so they can't let you out if your blood's dropping and obviously if you're not feeling good because something I irritated when I was throwing up from the surgery anyways I had more scans and more of this and it was just so much that I literally thought it was never gonna end um, thankfully I had my parents there by my side like I said I can't even remember half of what went on but being in there for two weeks is just so long that you just do so much every day it's constantly something new when you know you're trying to keep someone alive that's losing blood um, so after the surgery was almost just as bad because of the throwing up and then not eating for a whole nother week because of that and more tests and more scans and so finally like days later we tried eating again and again it was smaller meals and i ate like bland bland food like no sauce no nothing just to see if i can digest that so i could finally get out so that was like another few days and then finally they let all my levels my blood pressure and everything and they released me on sunday at like two o'clock so i've just been recovering my mom stayed with me that whole week after till thursday um, and now like I'm back by myself and just taking it easy. I have six weeks off from any training, any hiking, any physical activity. Can't do any crazy yoga. So thankfully I'm already on from surgery. I'm already on like week three. I see my doctor this next week and then I only have two more weeks. So it is going by pretty fast, but just it's hard for a gym rat to be out of the gym for that long. But I know I'm just trying to eat a lot more. Um, in the beginning, I was only able to eat really small meals because my stomach shrank and it couldn't even handle it. I got full so fast, it was crazy. Um, now my appetite's getting back up. I'm taking like B12, my iron and certain things. And no, none of this is just from being vegan. Vegan, if anything, helps this so much more because I'm already healthy. That's another thing is all the doctors told me thankfully you're young you're healthy you're in shape you work out a lot and your body's just gonna snap back like that so that's another thing i want to tell you guys is that realize little things can happen at any moment anytime with your body with your health internally externally you never know so to be as healthy as you can be is the best thing you can do for yourself because if something tragic happens, it's easier to bounce back when you're 100% healthy than when you're not and you're even feeling worse. It's gonna take your body a lot more time to heal and get better. So at the end of the day, the best thing you could do for yourself is eat healthy, try and work out every day, try and exercise every day just a little bit if you can. It's going to be good for the long run for anything. You guys literally never know what's going to happen. Like, I never thought this was going to happen to me at 24. I'm thankful it happened now and not later on in life. And I'm young. And, you know, you're born with some things you just, you never know. And thankfully that I can recover now. So, I'm on the road to recovery. Um, and that was something that was pretty tragic in my life that I was not expecting. But I got through it. And... God got me through it, my family got me through it, and everybody around me got me through it, and I felt like it was never going to end, but it did. So that's my story in a very, very, very short version, <laughs> um, and as much as I can really remember right now. But like I said, you guys, stay healthy, work out, exercise, stretch, eat healthy, try and better yourself every day. 
um, because we have one beautiful life and you just never know things that happen, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this if you watched the whole thing. Well, not really enjoy, enjoy it, but I hope, I don't know, it can help somebody maybe realize that to be as healthy as you can be is so important because things like this that happen in your life and you want to bounce back. Um, also, just in general, just to be the best version of yourself. So thank you so much for watching and taking the time and caring and I love you all and I'll see you all soon.